Sugar, sweet though it might be, is complicated. The issue of the moment stems from the fact that sugar comes in two kinds, cane sugar and beet sugar. Tate and Lyle depend on imported cane sugar from the Commonwealth, but the Common Market's agricultural policy discriminates in favour of European beet. So the government helps Tate and Lyle remain competitive with a payment of £9 million, but that payment is due to end next year. Importing cane sugar and refining it, Tate and Lyle have suggested, would then be impossible. On today's march, the World Development Movement were calling for our country to continue buying cane sugar from developing countries who need the money. But the majority of marchers had concerns much closer to home. They were workers from Tate and Lyle refineries who fear the death of their industry. What's the point of the funeral gear and the coffin? Uh, well, the reason for today's demonstration is this is symbolising the death of 9,000 jobs in the sugar industry. Over the common market issue on the agriculture policy, we are trying to make the government change their minds in some way in which they will alter this agreement so to keep these 9,000 jobs in the cane industry. Many of the workers came from the Thames refinery in the East End. It processes a third of the country's sugar and employs 3,000 people. Before they went to join the march, some of them explained their worries. We are finding ourselves completely at the mercy of the government policies, for which we've got no control over. In regards to myself, I'm not the only one, but I depend on this job. And we have got no say in this. Only the government can save us from this situation. In this area alone, there's about four or five factories closed in the last four or five years. The possibility of getting a job in this area is nil. We need the employment in this area. You can take over to the other side of the river there, the AEI. We saw 5,000 jobs go. We saw the government do nothing about it, move the industry away. So we are going to say to the government, we want our jobs here. Who do you blame for the situation getting the to what it market. is? The common market. Going into the common market. The government. I think that partly it's due to the weak-kneed government we've got, who seem to be more interested in furthering the beet sugar industry of France than they do of a thriving industry here. Is it in the power of this government, while we're in the common market, to change its mind? It seems to us that the ministers in Brussels have got to be the people that's got to change their mind. So, what are your so what are your chances of success against them? Well, this will lay to the British government to push as hard as they possibly can to get us the proper fair deal we're entitled to. We're only asking for what we've always enjoyed. We're not asking for no more. We're not taking anybody's love the other way. We only want to maintain our own. Is there a suspicion at all that you're just really fodder for a campaign by your employers, really, a propaganda, a propaganda campaign against the government? What do you feel all, about that? Not at no. all. Not at all. No. 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 We're fighting for our very livelihood now. We're going to fight to the end. There is a danger that the enemies, our enemies, will see us as just that, a tool of the management to look after their industry. Basically, we're interested in our jobs. The management are interested in quite a few other things besides our jobs. The combined protests of management and workers have shown little sign of winning any big concessions from the government. The government stressed that nothing has yet been firmly decided, but they hope to end up with a new structure for the sugar industry which will be in the best interest of all the parties concerned. The management of Dayton Lyle have told us they don't want to discuss publicly the possible threat to their operations, although they are privately pressurising the government to try and ensure that the government's financial help does continue. But if that help does stop, it wouldn't necessarily be the death blow to the company that some newspaper headlines have been suggesting this week. In fact, Dayton Lyle could continue. It's just that they'd have to close down their sugar refineries. Now, to most people, Dayton Lyle means sugar, and sugar means Dayton Lyle. But in fact, sugar refining accounts for only about a fifth of the company's profits. Only last month, the company announced a big expansion in a totally different area in their transport subsidiary, bringing the turnover of that area from £16 million to £48 million. So Tate & Lyle, the company, could survive the end of government help on sugar. But for the employees whose work is sugar, it would be a completely different matter. My family has worked for this firm over 50 years. Father, brothers, aunts, uncles, son, uh, my son works here. And we are going to feel it very much indeed. Because uh, myself, 40 years service, and I'm only one of the young ones. And we are going to feel it, and I think I'm very embittered against this government. Because by the stroke of a pen, they can put 9,000 people out of work. Sugar 
in the morning, sugar in the evening, sugar at supper time. Be my little.